Scott, thanks very much for joining me today. Cool. Uh, we're talking a little bit about Microsoft's open source efforts. Yeah. So everybody knows about the Roslyn compiler, but there's a lot more. Can you break it down for me a little bit? Yeah, so Microsoft is not just open sourcing stuff, but getting involved in open source right. way more uh, than before. But for some people, it might look like it was something that happened in the last year or so. Mm -hmm. But um, it's actually been a process, and I just think what we're seeing now is the beginning of the hockey stick Ah, upwards, you right. know, uh, and when I talk about .NET open source, I like to show this article uh, from the register. Oh, actually, no, it was an O'Reilly article oh. from 2001 that says Microsoft plans shared source .NET, and that's when we did Rotor, which right. was .NET for education. Indeed. So we did shared source for education, then we did source opened. Ah, look but don't touch. Clever. We get reference source, and then now we're open source. You know, Apache license, right. up on GitHub, take backs, we've got a contributor license agreement bot. So there's Roslyn that you Roslyn. pointed out, that's the C Sharp and VB compilers. Right. There's .NET Core, which is .NET for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also got it running on a Raspberry Pi, although that's not an official, right. not an official thing. But very cool. Yeah, yeah. There's the, the jitter, the 64-bit jitter is now open source, so the, the whole thing, it's not just the libraries, it's the right. CLR, it's the you know, it's the compilers, it's the jitter, it's a garbage collector, it's the whole thing. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and also ASP.NET. Of, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's cool. So you want to go into a little more detail on the web stuff? Why why that particular component? Well, so .NET is client side and server side. Right. But when you make like a WinForms application, that calls into Win32. Right. And the only way to get that running on Linux would be to get it like through Wine. Indeed. Or to go and create some kind of a Wine-like layer. That doesn't really make any sense, and you know, do you really want write once look like crap everywhere? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Java applets look like Java applets everywhere. Everywhere you want. That's not where the strength is. I think the strength is on the server side. Right. So just like uh, when someone sits down today and they go, I want to do a, I want to do a web framework, Ruby, Go, Java, PHP, right. Python. I want .NET to be in the in the menu so that it is a, a choice. To be one of the available tools. Yeah, it's a cafeteria plan, right? That's what open source is. Right. So, we talk about the benefits to the company of going to open source. What's, what does Microsoft get out of it? So, this is my opinion, right? Okay. I'm not a, this is an important thing to point out. Right? I'm not a Microsoft spokesman. Right. I just happen to be loud, <laughs> okay? So, as such, this is my opinion. But Microsoft, you know, sold Windows licenses and that right. was what Microsoft did. They showed you Windows, they showed you Office, right? Yes. But like Microsoft of 2015, you know, I've got like, I've got like, you know, my iPhone 6, and I've got Office and Excel, right? And I've got a Microsoft keyboard. I just got the really cool foldable oh, very keyboard, nice. right? So you know, here I am living a normal techie life that is a hybrid. I've Indeed. got Microsoft hardware, and I've got an Apple phone, and I've got Microsoft software, and maybe I'm right. SSHing into a Linux box that's running in Azure. Right. Microsoft is involved in compute, right? That's exactly. what it's about. I don't care if you run Linux in Azure, right? Azure doesn't care. Right. So Microsoft wants to make every app, every developer, everywhere happy. Excellent. So I think that they're going to, you know, they're going to get a piece of it on the compute side. All right. So does any of that how are the community contributions filtering back in? I mean, are, we, are you in a situation where it's heavily vetted before ever anything comes back that you might actually use, mm. or? Well, heavily vetted, they are heavily vetted before they ship. Right. In the sense of, if you did a pull request and we brought it in, you know, you'd sign a contributed license agreement just like you'd sign if you put in anything in Bootstrap. Right. right? There's no different. But everything goes through the same, uh, you know, geopolitical checks and language checks and security checks as if you were a vendor. You know, right. so, but here's the thing. Microsoft employees do pull requests too. Oh, okay. And they get rejected as well. So Excellent. your pull request is no different than theirs. Very cool. Does that make sense? And they all get vetted to the same process. Right. So they Which is kind of how it's supposed to work. Guarantee of quality. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it's just like I like to use the example of Chrome versus Chromium, right? <laughs> okay. Well, so Chromium is the open source project and the browser that you can run. It right. is the Chromium project. Google Chrome is the Google-backed, supported I see, the insta official. instance of Chromium. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. So you could run your own crazy forked version of ASP.NET on a Raspberry Pi, and, you know, we'll support you a little bit, but if you right. call support, ah, right? Right. But if you run ASP.NET, open source, and you put it on Linux, you know, at the end of the year when we have a go-live license, we'll support you. Excellent. All right. 
So what's the future look like? What's next? Well, I think it's keeps keep learning, Okay. right? Trying to figure out what people want. I think that Microsoft on the developer side would like more developers. We want, and a Microsoft developer shouldn't necessarily be just a C-sharp developer or an F-sharp developer. Right. Uh, we've got Cordova. Right. And really, really top of the line, best of breed debugging for Android apps mm -hmm. on Visual Studio, right? Excellent. You've got a partnership with Xamarin. So yes. you've got iOS on Visual Studio. One of the things that open source people don't really realize sometimes is that our Python tools and our Node tools, Node for Visual Studio and Python for Visual Studio, are free and are Impressive. open source. That's awesome. Yeah, so interactive debugging, uh, vir visual NPM, all that kind of stuff, all open source and all in Visual Studio, which is also free now for open source. Fantastic. So visualstudio.com slash free. Open source okay. projects get a full full version, not a not a minim, minimal version, a full pro version of Visual Studio. That's impressive. It's uh, it's not, I like to say it's not your, you know, grandpappy's Microsoft. It's a, into the future. Well, I wouldn't work here if I didn't think it was cool. Fantastic. All right. Thanks very much for your time. Yeah, my pleasure. I appreciate it.